How close are we to the rapture and the end times events it is connected to? To answer that question, we must examine what the Bible says about the lead up to Christ's return. Biblical prophecy outlines signs that will precede the rapture, tribulation, and second coming of Jesus. Comparing these prophecies to current global events can give insight into how near we may be to these end times occurrences. However, while we can observe intriguing parallels, the truth is that no one knows with certainty how soon Jesus will return. Scripture warns against predicting dates and assures us he will come at an unexpected hour. The concept of the rapture, the belief that faithful Christians will be caught up to meet Christ in the clouds before the great tribulation, has captivated evangelical imagination for the past century and a half. The origins of the doctrine are debated, but it gained significant popularity in the 1830s through the teachings of John Nelson Darby and the Plymouth Brethren movement. Since then, attempts to pinpoint the timing of the rapture in relation to end times events described in biblical prophecy have consumed evangelical thought. But what does scripture say about the rapture and how close we may be to it? First, the word rapture itself does not appear in most English translations of the Bible, though it does originate from the Latin translation of 1 Thessalonians 4.17, which reads, we will be caught up, or rapturous, from the Latin rapiamur. Paul writes to the Thessalonians that those who have died in Christ will be resurrected first, then believers who remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 this passage describes the event most commonly referred to as the rapture. Some key points provide clues about its nature and timing. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says the rapture will happen suddenly, in the twinkling of an eye. This emphasizes the unexpected shock in which believers will be caught up to the clouds. There will be no time to prepare or anticipate the exact moment Christ returns. It will occur instantly. The rapture involves both dead and living believers according to 1 Thessalonians 4.16. Those Christians who have passed away will be resurrected from their graves and reunited with their bodies. At the same time, believers still alive on the earth will be caught up together with them. All will meet Christ in the air. 1 Corinthians 15.51 53 describes how the rapture results in believers receiving their immortal bodies. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, Christians will be gloriously transformed. The rapture ushers in our full salvation. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 4.18 that the truth of the rapture is meant to encourage believers and bring them comfort. We can live in hope, knowing Christ will return to gather us to himself. Other passages build context around the rapture event. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 shows that when the rapture occurs, Jesus himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. This demonstrates the rapture is tied directly to the second coming of Christ. 1 Corinthians 15.52 and 1 Thessalonians 4.16 teach that the resurrection of the dead happens in conjunction with the rapture. While living believers are caught up, deceased Christians will be raised and reunited with renewed bodies. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1, 3 indicates the rapture cannot happen until after the great falling away from faith and the revelation of the man of sin, or Antichrist. This suggests certain prophetic developments must precede the rapture. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, Paul reminds that for unbelievers, the coming of the Lord will be like a thief in the night, sudden and unexpected. For faithful Christians, it will be a welcomed arrival. Matthew 24, 31 shows that when Jesus returns, he will gather together his elect from the four winds and every part of the earth. The rapture will be a global gathering. From these verses, we can conclude the rapture will be a supernatural gathering of living and dead believers in Christ to meet him as he returns bodily and visibly to earth from heaven. This will result in the resurrection and glorification of all faithful Christians across history. The timing of the rapture is debated and various perspectives exist. Pre-tribulation, believers raptured before the seven-year tribulation period. Mid-tribulation, 
Rapture occurs 3.5 years into the tribulation. Post-tribulation, rapture happens at the end of the tribulation. The pre-tribulation view rose to prominence in the 19th century through J.N. Darby's teachings and is widely held today, though all three views have biblical defenders. Scriptures suggesting believers will be spared God's wrath, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, Romans 5, 9, and the rapid, unexpected nature of Christ's return support the pre-tribulation perspective. But others see the rapture and second coming as one event after tribulation, Matthew 24, 29, 31. The mid-tribulation perspective believes the rapture will occur three and a half years into the seven-year tribulation period, or at the midpoint. This is based on Daniel 9, 27, which mentions a week or seven years of tribulation. Supporters of this view believe the first three and a half years will be relatively peaceful as the Antichrist rises in power. The second three and a half years will be much worse as God pours out his wrath. They argue that the rapture will occur right before this final outpouring of wrath, sparing believers from it. Some key verses used to defend the mid-tribulation position are Revelation 11, 3 and 12, 6, which reference 1,260 days or three and a half years, implying the Antichrist breaks his covenant and exerts control at the midpoint of the tribulation. Also, 2 Thessalonians 2, 4 suggests the Antichrist will set himself up as God in the temple at the midpoint, which followers of this view believe indicates the start of the worst period. The post-tribulation view contends the rapture will take place at the very end of the seven-year tribulation period, right before the millennial kingdom begins. According to this perspective, passages about Christ gathering his elect, Matthew 24, 29, 31, and rewarding believers, Revelation 22, 12, refer to one singular return of Christ at the close of tribulation. Post-tribulationists also emphasize that scripture does not teach God will remove believers from suffering or tribulation, but will preserve them through it. John 16.33, Romans 5.3.4 They believe passages about God's wrath refer to the final bowl judgments at the very end of tribulation, Revelation 16.1, from which believers will be spared. While interpretations differ, all three major views on the rapture's timing have thoughtful biblical reasoning. As with many areas of prophecy, the wise approach is to discuss with humility while awaiting the glorious return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Scripture does not give precise timing, but underscores that Christ could return at any moment. Believers are to live in readiness for His coming, whether before or after tribulation. Matthew 24, 42, 44. This brings us to the key question, how close are we to the rapture and Christ's return? Proponents of the rapture disagree about its proximity. Some pursue intricate timelines and predictions based on current events. However, Jesus himself discouraged date setting and emphasized the unexpected nature of his return, coming as a thief in the night. Matthew 24, 36, 44, 1 Thessalonians 5, 2. He also warned against prophecy sensationalism, Luke 17, 22, 24. At the same time, Jesus did teach disciples to observe the signs of the times so the day would not overtake them, Matthew 16, 3. What are potential indicators Christ's coming is drawing near? A few stand out. Increased natural disasters are prophesied by Jesus in Luke 21, 11. Earthquakes, famines, pestilences, and other catastrophic events could signal the end times have arrived. While disasters have always plagued humanity, their frequency and intensity appear to be escalating globally. Some speculate current events like pandemics, natural disasters or unrest in Israel fulfill end times prophecy. However, the basic conditions described have existed throughout history to varying degrees. While they may escalate before Christ's return, isolated occurrences do not provide conclusive evidence. It is imminent. Matthew 24, 6. 7 foretells that in the end times there will be wars, rumors of wars, and international strife. Violence and unrest will increase. In recent years, we have witnessed continual upheaval between nations and intensifying worldwide conflict. Some believe many of these signs are already being fulfilled or are in motion, indicating the rapture may be soon. 
However, Jesus states no one knows the day or hour of his return, Matthew 24, 36. According to Matthew 24, 10, 12, the end times will be characterized by apostasy or a falling away from the faith. Even professing Christians will abandon truth as lawlessness abounds. As culture drifts further from God's moral standards, this sign is increasingly evident. Paul writes in 2 Timothy 3, 1, 5 about people becoming lovers of self and pleasure rather than God in the last days. Some Christians see this reflected in modern culture and morals. However, similar declining morals have occurred throughout history. Paul may be referring to human nature rather than a specific time period. Jesus declares in Matthew 24, 14, that the gospel will be preached to the entire world before the end comes. In the past century, modern technology has advanced global evangelism efforts to an unprecedented degree, bringing the message of Christ to more people than ever before. Some believe this sign is complete or nearing completion. Technological advances are also viewed as paving the way for the Antichrist's global rule, as described in Revelation 13. Developments like artificial intelligence, digital currencies, and surveillance technology have raised speculation. However, technology has long been misused. Its mere advancement does not necessarily mean the end is imminent. Skeptics argue there are still unreached people groups, preventing Christ's return. Measuring this precisely is impossible. Prophesied signs in the heavens are noted by Jesus in Luke 21, 25, 28. Unusual lunar eclipses, solar storms, meteors, and other heavenly activity could presage the return of Christ. Increased secularism and the rise of a global government led by the Antichrist will occur. Revelation 13. The development of the European Union and calls for a new world order suggest movement toward the prophesied global government. Pressure against religious freedom and Bible-based values, paired with the rapid spread of the gospel worldwide via technology, also align with end-time prophecies. Finally, most significantly, the nation of Israel will be re-established, control Jerusalem, and rebuild their temple, Luke 21, 24. The regathering of Israel is foretold by Jesus in Matthew 24, 32, 33. God promised to bring Jews back to their homeland in the last days and the official recognition of Israel in 1948 was a monumental fulfillment. The rebirth of Israel after nearly 2,000 years, the subsequent recapturing of Jerusalem in 1967, and growing interest in rebuilding the Jewish temple, all are considered key fulfillments. Overall, while there are interesting theories and interpretations, no one can state with certainty how close we are to the rapture and Christ's return based on biblical signs or world events. However, while these general signs seem increasingly evident, other specifics have not yet transpired. The Antichrist has not emerged, the temple has not been rebuilt, and the devastating tribulation period described in Revelation has not begun. For this reason, no one can definitively state the precise timing of the rapture. There have been misguided predictions throughout history. Paul cautions in 2 Thessalonians 2. 1. 3. Against being deceived into thinking the day of the Lord has already come. Jesus also cautioned that no one knows the day or hour of his return. Matthew 24, 36. In verse 42 of the same chapter, he emphasizes that we must be prepared at all times, since he will return at an hour we do not expect. Rather than obsess over calculating dates, Christians should focus on faithfully living out God's will and sharing the gospel while awaiting Christ's return. Ultimately, the end times unfold according to God's timing and perfect will. Our job is simply to be ready and waiting expectantly for Christ's return, whether it happens five years from now or 500. We must wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. 1 Thessalonians 1.10 NKJV being spiritually prepared through faith in Christ is what matters most. While intriguing signs certainly indicate the world stage being set for prophecy fulfillment, no one can know with certainty how close we are to the rapture and end times. But as believers, we eagerly await Christ's return, whether it happens in our lifetime or beyond. The Lord reminds us to watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming.
Matthew 24, 42, NKJV. Only God knows the appointed time. We must maintain constant vigilance, living each day ready to meet our Savior. Though the end may seem near, it may also still be far off according to God's perfect timing. We should find hope and motivation in Christ's promised return while avoiding idle speculation. By abiding in Him, we can trust He will return at just the right moment. Followers of Jesus are to live with eager expectancy that His return could happen at any moment. Titus 2.13 At the same time, no one knows the day or hour. Matt 24.36 the wise course is to make sure of our salvation and relationship with Christ while also being students of prophecy and the times in which we live. Then on that great day whenever it arrives we can lift up our heads with joy knowing our redemption draws near. Luke 21:28. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, 